Okay, so continue the discussion on the top turbofan and turbo shaft kind of engines. So, this uh, would be uh, again I mean by this time you have enough idea about this uh, turbo jet or turbo fan kind of uh, cycle analysis. So, this would be pretty quick and we will touch upon all the important aspect of this turbo fan turbo uh, shaft kind of engine. So, let us start with, with some example here like um, the example where top uh, left you see uh, that is an example of um, Cessna uh, aircraft where um, this is again a turbo prop uh, engine which is sitting there it is um, and then uh, this one is also locket this is also turbo prop based engine and uh, also you can see these are uh, some of these other uh, turbo prop kind of applications which are uh, there. So, this uh, now the turbo prop engines could be single double or triple spool. Uh, the single spool engine the only one turbine drives one compressor and propeller uh, like um, you can that would be like this is a single pin one well it, it will have one uh, single propeller or uh, these things then the other could be the low pressure turbine drives either the single compressor or this and then you can have this is a twin spool configuration here you can see the twin spool configuration here the LPT turbine drives the propeller. So, here the LPT driver and drives both the LPC and propeller this is another example. Then you can have a 3 spool turbo prop engine also which is there and you can see there as I said there could be 2 spool, 3 uh, single spool, 2 spool, 3 spool different kind of engines and there is a quite a bit of history of this uh, kind of engine which are uh, there that um, it started with uh, I mean still again from I think I would say 1940s onward and different kind of development and now this uh, turbo prop engines are also in use depending on the application because um, at the low speed applications uh, they are quite efficient. So, this can be um, used now. Now, we can this is a single spool layout of a turboprop engine and we can look at the cycle analysis for this one. So, what you have like the let us say the flight speed here. Uh, so, I can draw the quickly the T s diagram. So, the T s diagram if I draw this is A this goes to 2. So, compared to turbo jet or turbo fan this would be quite simple in that way I mean in point of view of the analysis because you have less components uh, system is not that complex compared to those engines. Now, this flight speed u which is would be m a gamma r t a. Now, first intake that we see the intake has an isentropic efficiency of eta d and ambient conditions are pressure and temperature and the flight Mach number is m a. The temperature and the pressure at the intake and outlets are T naught 2 P naught 2 which can be calculated that we have already seen. S then it come to compressor where again the compressor efficiency is pi c isen uh, uh, sorry uh, pressure ratio pi c isentropic efficiency eta c. Then uh, using those the compressor uh, things can be calculated and uh, the specific power for the compressor which can be calculated like CPC T naught 3 minus T naught 2. Then combustion chamber again when you come to the combustion chamber you know the combustor efficiency 
and also the pressure drop across the combustion chamber, then uh, we can find out fuel air ratio, outlet pressure P after the combustion um, chamber. So, all this can be again calculated. Fourth turbine. So, since the turbine drives the compressor as well as the propeller, so the <coughs> portion of the power transfer to each is known in advance. So, then it is easy to do the energy balancing. Now, the portion of the turbine power is also delivered to propeller. This propeller power is independent on other several efficiencies like um, mechanical efficiency of the turbine, compressor, gearbox and then also propeller efficiency. So, we can look at a simple like diagram to explain this like we have the turbine here and so this is 4, this is 5 and this is 6. So, if we draw an diagram of enthalpy entropy diagram, so this is P naught 4 where it was there coming to P naught 5 and then coming down to um, P A. So, this is 6. So, this is a okay. So, this portion is is delta H then and this portion is alpha delta H then obviously, uh, this portion would be 1 minus alpha delta H and this portion is um, this is called the delta H n s. So, where eta t is turbine efficiency, turbine isentropic efficiency, eta is nozzle isentropic efficiency. So, what we can write here that also delta H is the enthalpy drop available in an ideal which is isentropic turbine and nozzle exhaust nozzle alpha delta H equals to delta H T S which is the fraction of delta H that would be available from an isentropic turbine which is having the actual pressure ratio and delta H n s which is 1 minus alpha delta H is the fraction of delta H that may be available from an isentropic nozzle. Okay. So, what we can write that delta H is C P T T naught 4 1 minus P A by P naught 4 gamma H minus 1 by gamma H. Now, gamma T if we assume gamma H is gamma H then exhaust gas speed would be calculated eta n 1 minus alpha delta H. 
So, u u would be 2 into 1 minus alpha delta h eta uh, n. Now, so the propeller uh, there is a propeller uh, power or force which is there uh, then uh, the propeller thrust can be calculated which is T P R is like m dot a eta p r eta g w sept by u. Now, w sept is eta m t that means, eta m t is the mechanical efficiency uh, into 1 plus f minus b delta h turbine minus delta H c by eta m c. So, where the turbine specific power uh, like uh, delta H t is given as eta t alpha delta H. Now, m dot A is the um, an air which is inducted f is m dot f by m dot A, b is m dot b by m dot A. So, this guy T p r can be replaced at m dot a eta p r eta g by u 1 plus f minus b eta m t eta t alpha delta h minus delta h c by eta m c. Now, the thrust force which is obtained from this exhaust gas nozzle is denoted as T n which is m dot a 1 plus f minus b u v minus u. So, the total thrust would be T p r plus T n. So, now that is what we can get. Now, if we respect this total thrust uh, I mean the differentiate this total thrust with respect to alpha and set it to 0, then we get the alpha optimum. But that maximizes the thrust for fixed efficiencies, flight speed obviously those parameters. So, for fixed u uh, efficiency delta h c delta h for these things, then the alpha optimum which one can get 1 minus u square by 2 delta h into eta n eta p r square eta g square eta m t square eta t square. So, that is what one can get. Now, for a particular value of alpha defines this optimum power split between the propeller and the jet. So, once we use this value in t total and then uh, we can get the T max, T total max or the maximum value of the thrust force. And for that, the corresponding u exit would be u eta n by eta p r eta g eta m t eta t. So, that would be the corresponding value of that. So, now, we can move to a two spool configuration like this, where again we can look at the T s diagram quickly. This is A go to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is A. So, this is uh, this is a two spool turboprop engine and again the different components can be examined here. Again the gas generator where the energy balance between um, compressor plus high pressure turbine it eta m t delta h t would be delta h c by eta m c. So, then the specific work generated in the turbine of the gas generator which is given delta H t 
equals to C P T T naught 4 minus T naught 5 1 plus F minus B. So, so we know that turbine inlet temperature and the outlet temperature T naught 5 can be calculated once so equals to T naught 4 minus C P T uh, sorry C P C into T naught 3 minus T naught 2 C P T eta M C eta M T into 1 plus F minus B. So, uh, I mean as per notation B is the bleed and uh, F is the failure ratio then P naught 5 can be calculated like P naught 4 1 minus T naught 4 minus T naught 5 by eta T T naught 4. So, which is gamma t by gamma t minus 1. So, this this is what we can talk about gas generator turbine. Now, the this is essentially then the we can look at the free turbine free power turbine. So, free power turbine I think at 5 that is there the work developed by the free power turbine uh, per unit mass could be calculated as C P F T 1 plus F minus V. So, this is free power turbine. Um, so, already these we have discussed for the single spool calculation and ca similar procedure can be followed where we can say that uh, delta H is the enthalpy drop this is available in an ideal turbine and exhaust nozzle. Assuming a full expansion to the ambient pressure which is assumed that by assuming P 7 equals to P A. So, where then delta H we can write C P T T naught 5 1 minus P 7 by P naught 5 gamma T minus 1 by gamma T and alpha delta H is H a free turbine is which is the fraction of the delta H that would be available for an isentropic free turbine having the actual pressure ratio. So, what we can write delta H F T S is eta F T delta H F T S. So, eta F T is the isentropic efficiency of the free power turbine. Okay. So, we can follow the similar procedure what we have already done like uh, we can draw a schematic like this where we have this, this is 5 6, 7 and we can let us say draw the H s diagram. So, this is 0 5 comes here P naught 5, P naught 6, this is 0 6. So, which is kind of Seven. So again, that is delta H, and this portion is alpha delta H. So what we get is that the 
propeller thrust that we can calculate. Now, how we do that? We do that like tree propeller would be m dot a eta p r eta g by u 1 plus f minus b eta m f t eta free turbine alpha delta h and p nozzle would be m dot a 1 plus f minus b u e minus u. So, the total power would be T p r plus T n and then again T by m dot is eta p r eta gearbox by u 1 plus f minus b eta m f t eta f t alpha delta h plus 1 plus f minus b root over of 2 1 minus alpha eta n delta h minus u. And yes, here eta m f t is the mechanical efficiency of the free power turbine. So, when we try to maximize the thrust, so what will get happen? So, um, maximize the thrust, so we get alpha optimum which is 1 minus u square by 2 delta h eta n by eta p square eta g square eta m f t square eta f t square. Again it can be mentioned that this particular value alpha depends the optimum speed um, between propeller and the jet. So, once we use this uh, optimum speed we will get the maximum thrust force. So, you can use that to get the T max and corresponding u exit velocity would be u eta n by eta p r eta g eta m f t eta f t. So, the outlet conditions are uh, free turbine can be easily calculated by the known value of delta H and alpha optimum. So, an alternative to parameter alpha one methods can be followed like known exhaust speed or known the ratio of the. Now, then we can look at the equivalent engine power. So, when you talk about that, there are two flight phases which can be discussed. One is the static condition. So, this is during testing or take off condition the total equivalent horsepower is denoted by T E H P or equal to the S H P of propeller plus the S H P equivalent to the net thrust force. So, one can write this during takeoff is S H P plus jet thrust by some sort of an parameter. Now, S P is the shaft power, then uh, if we know the shaft power then we can write T E P which is in kilowatt during takeoff is the shaft power in kilowatt plus jet thrust in Newton by 8.5. And the thrust on test bench or ground testing this T would be m dot 1 plus f minus b into u e. Now, this is static condition other condition could be flight operation which is for a turboprop engine during a flight the equivalent shaft horsepower which is E S H P is shaft horsepower plus thrust into U by constant into propeller 
and the T is m dot 1 plus f minus b u e minus u. So, now this constants can be depending on the unit. So, for example, it can be knots, it could be in mile per hour. So, and where the typical propeller efficiency is around 80 percent. Then we have fuel consumption. So, already we have we have to define TSFC which is m dot f by t and for turbo power engine the fuel consumption which is defined is an equivalent. So, this is in general for turbo prop equivalent specific fuel consumption which is m dot f to equivalent shaft horsepower. So, this is the value typically remains uh, 0 0.27 to 36 kg fuel per kilowatt horsepower. So, that is what for propeller engine we can define things in that fashion. So, now we can draw a quick correlation like some sort of an one can say like analogy analogy with turbo fan engines. So, this can be sort of drawn. Now, the turbo prop engines are kind of analogous to the high bypass ratio turbo fan engine. Okay. So, the propeller itself is an unducted fan with a bypass ratio equal to or greater than. So, the propeller uh, bypass ratio could be equivalent or greater than equal to 25 or higher. So, this can be um, looked at that unducted bypass fan. The air flow through the propeller is slightly accelerated, thus it requires speed slightly higher than the aircraft flight speed. Now, the another thing is that momentum difference between the inlet and the outlet flows through the propeller produces the propeller thrust. So, there is a propeller thrust which is getting produced. Then the accelerated air passes through the core of the engine and uh, then where the gas generator added uh, fuel, uh, uh, energy is added due to fuel burning and then it accelerates to high speed. So, the momentum difference, so this is sort of a momentum difference between inlet and outlet flow through propeller. So, this is propeller thrust and then the core thrust or the sometimes one can say the jet thrust which is a momentum difference between inlet and outlet core flow. So, that gives the, so the first force can be written as T equals to M dot O into u 1 minus u naught plus m dot a 1 plus f minus b u e minus u. Here m dot a is the mass of the uh, mass flow rate of the air which passes through the core flow and this is the m dot is the quota is the total mass flow rate. Okay. So, now if you look at for the turbo fan thrust equation, this is for turbo fan with uh, bypass ratio. 
this is written at m dot a beta u 1 plus 1 plus a minus b u e minus 1 plus beta u naught. So, the specific thrust to engine core mass flow rate to get that is that uh, here the T for turbo fan by m dot a is beta u 1 plus 1 plus f minus b u e plus 1 plus beta u naught. So, this should be minus here 1 plus uh, 1 plus beta minus this. So, you can see this um, nice uh, correlation between the turbo prop engine and the bypass ratio turbo fan, they kind of look similar, which is sort of an equivalency one can think about because here the propeller actually behaves like in the fan which is sitting in the turbo fan engines and it also uh, contributes to the thrust and we have already seen that there are two component of the thrust one is the propeller thrust then the other one is the core thrust so these are the different components which um, could be produced for the now we'll, uh, uh, stop the discussion for uh, here and pretty much that is the one which uh, I would like to discuss on turboprop engine like turbosaft and other I will continue in the next class.